XMB 4K Basics. We've already published several articles and video clips about the network file sharing using the well-known SMB or Samba protocol. This file sharing method was made popular long ago because of its use in Microsoft's Windows operating system. Nowadays, Samba file shares are routinely offered by modern, powerful NAT routers in our homes and small businesses. If your router has a USB connector on it, you can probably take advantage of this feature as we described in our November 2010 episode on network attached storage the easy way. We've been doing this for years. For example, back in October of 2010, we mentioned our use of the venerable Linksys NSL U2 or Slug to view our extensive collection of uh, DVD movies on any of our computers or tablets or the TVs connected to our home local area network. Google's Android operating system supports SMB file sharing by default, so any uncrippled Android device can browse these shared files, making them extremely convenient to access from any place within your home or small office. Modern Linux machines can also support Samba shares. One of the most popular applications that focus on Samba file access is the SMB4K Samba browser. SMB4K works wonderfully, but it is rather complex. In my experience using SMB4K on the popular PC Linux OS operating system, it's easy to swerve into problems, and it can be rather difficult to figure out the successful path that can allow powerful, robust access. I found some behavior that I believe results from bugs in the user interface or in the internal logic of SMB4K, but I've also found reasonable workarounds that I use with great success. In the other clips of this series, I'll show you exactly what it looks like to launch, use, and configure SMB4K as I explore the Samba Share resources on my own local area network. You're going to learn several things. For example, one, you'll learn how SMB looks when it's properly installed. Two, you'll learn how to find the names of the Samba servers offering shared resources on your LAN. Three, you're going to learn how to find the names of the shares available through each of those uh, sharing devices or servers. Four, you're going to learn two different ways to mount those shares in Linux based on informal exploratory browsing where you don't need to know their names. Five, you're going to learn exactly how to mount a share manually by using a, a precise description of the resources that you want when you do know those in advance. And six, you'll learn how to configure the user interface of SMB4K to reveal more information about shared resources and disk drives. This really is not difficult, but you do need to provide some details in a precise and inflexible format. If you take advantage of the details that I provide in the following video clips, you'll be able to avoid and overcome the myriad paths that don't work and concentrate on those that do. Now this video clip is the first in a series of 10 clips. Because most of the clips are very short, it's important for you to watch them all in the proper order. If you are watching this first clip from within YouTube, you may find it difficult to find all of the other associated clips and you may likely get them in the wrong order. So please join us in the Linux section at AskMrWizard.com where you'll find it much easier and you'll also find additional related material. From YouTube's um, window, you can see a blue link in the text description below. Click on that blue link and you'll be taken directly to the appropriate area of our AskMrWizard.com archives. Now, in the subsequent clips, prepare to see my display screen as I lead you along. Click on each video link in order. Let's get started. Thanks.